We're going to rapid fire tonight. Christian is just going to say what God's put on our heart about what this time of year means. So, please listen up. To me, Christmas was always about being with your family, but my family's really into Christmas. It's my grandma's birthday, it was also her anniversary, so it was always just Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. But I don't really know if I was really thinking about Christmas the way I should have, because it was always happy holidays, here's a present, here's a birthday present, and here's a Christmas present. What am I going to bake this day? What am I going to bake the next day? But when my mom left last year, it kind of changed things. I guess I kind of realized that even though it is important to be like Christmas, 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 it's more important to be about it's Christmas because it's Jesus' birthday. And we should be thankful that he's given us all this love and that he died on the cross for us. It ain't easy giving testimony. She did awesome. Fantastic. So, anyone want to guess what the title is? Throw it up there, please. Tis cool, tis the season. Do you remember what it's all about? Hey, I know that it feels like it's still hot outside because it is, because we're all like in shorts, some of us. We're all in some of us. I only wear shorts. Right on. So check it out. Here's how many days until Christmas? 20. 20. 20. Can you believe how fast that is going to be here? Here's what I'm going to need tonight. I'm going to need you to focus in right here because we're going to rapid fire, like I said. Got it? Cool. So, tis the season to remember what it's all about. As always, we will have three scriptures. I encourage you to write them in, take as many notes as you choose to. Uh, not because it makes me feel cool for you to say, that's good, mm -hmm. write it down. But so that later, if you care, you can remember what we're talking about. So, let me ask you this. Like, like Christian said, what do you think about when you think of Christmas? Shout something out. Present. Presents. What else? I'll be honest. Family. Everyone's like, look at that. Family. Family. Family, Christmas. <laughs> Cold weather. No school. Cold weather, no school. Lights on houses, food. Christmas trees, food, snow. Food. So we think about a lot of stuff when we think about Christmas, right? Let's be honest. Let's be completely honest. How often does, if it's word association, if I say Christmas, chances are you say presents. Christmas, gifts, Christmas, food, whatever. How often is the first word out of our mouth or the first thought in our head about this time of year, Jesus? Be honest. It comes up, but no one just shattered it out. When we think about Christmas, sometimes we have this, this, this weird mentality when the whole thing is to celebrate the birth of Jesus, and yet our culture and our society and our selfish nature has made it all about what? What can I ask for this year? You know, which brings up another good point of why this Sunday, wrapping these gifts for kids that aren't sitting there, saying, what can I get this year? They're just saying, I hope I get to eat. It really puts it in perspective. You're going you're gonna to be able to ask for stuff. You're going to be able to get stuff. You already know what you're getting, and chances are you've been waiting a long time to get this something, but it's Christmas, so you get to ask for it. That's not what it's about. So our first point here is this. What really matters is not always what matters to you. This time of year, some of you just think about gifts and presents. And you know what? That's fine if you're five. But you're not five anymore. Right? Spiritually, you might be five. But at, like, how many of you really feel like emotionally you're five years old? Like you throw a temper tantrum. Some of us can admit it. How about this? How about some of you really just think of yourself sometimes? When it comes to Christmas, you might be 15-ish or younger or older, but you really act like you're five. What can I get this year? What, what can I ask for? I've been waiting all year. I'll just ask for that for Christmas. And that's what Christmas is for you. That's not what really matters, but that's what really matters to you. If you're not five, that's not okay. That should be a problem for you. Here's the real problem in our lives, and it's Christmas or any other time of the year, but Christmas just puts a big old highlighter mark over it. Life, very quickly and very easily, especially at your age, becomes about stuff. Whether it's clothes or a video game or your brand new car or your really old car or you're just excited and you drive a slot cheese car, whatever, it doesn't matter. It becomes about stuff. It really does. Think about how much your life revolves around stuff. How many of you would you sell me your cell phone for a dollar a day? You can't use a cell phone, but you'll make a dollar a day. None of you. How many of you can make it without TV? How many of you can make it without a new clothes or new shoes or whatever else is popular? Maybe, maybe not. But life very easily becomes about stuff, doesn't it? And it's never more true than this time of year. But here's what the Bible warns us. Things that you own wind up owning you. Somehow, some way, the stuff that you've always wanted becomes more important to you than God did. 
check out this verse. It's the very first one. If you're writing it in, it's Luke 16, 13. I recommend writing this one in. Luke 16, 13. You'll have it on the screen, and I'll read it real quick. No one can serve two masters, for you will what? Hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. Here's a very simple thing. When you want so much stuff, and think Christmas time, because it's a time of year, when it's this time of year and all you're focused on is stuff, where does your loyalty really lie? God, I'm a Christian and I love you. And Jesus, this is all about you. Also, can I get this, 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 and this? Here's my last mom and dad. Thanks. Oh, yeah, Jesus, you're awesome. I won't think about you at all. But I'll get a lot of cool stuff. What really matters to you? I don't want you to lie to me. Don't lie to yourself. There's no point. If you can sit there and say, yeah, I want crap and it doesn't matter. I want a whole bunch of crap. I want stuff, things. That's all Christmas is to me. At least you can be honest with yourselves. But our problem is... Most of us really focus on things in life and forget about Jesus and don't even realize that we do it. This is a problem because you're not five years old anymore. It shouldn't happen that way. Because if you want stuff so much, you know what you forget about? The people around you. If you want stuff so much, you forget about the people around you. There's people around us. You have family. You know what? The big list you hand, it's mom and dad or grandma or uncle or whoever. It's pressure for them to want to get you stuff. Because they know how much you love stuff, and they think that the only way you'll love them back is to get you stuff. You know how twisted that is? Think about it. Well, my parents just want to buy my love. Because you don't give it to them any other way. That's a problem. Like, the Word tells us in Luke, if you begin to put things over God, you are going to turn your back on God. And it's not hard to. Think of it this way. Bible, television remote. It's not even it should be, but it is never what it should be. Things you own end up owning you. I want you to remember that, especially this time of year. Point number two, because we're rapid fire. Christmas time equals Jesus time. Or does it? That's how it reads in my head. That's the proper inflection. Or does it? So let me ask you this. When you think Christmas, do you automatically think Jesus? Probably not. We established that. We should be celebrating Him. And this time of year, the only gift that really matters is the gift that we've already been given. Jesus was born. Why was Jesus born? Anyone want to take a shot in the dark? He was born to... Yeah, how did he do that? He died. Jesus was born. We don't celebrate little baby Jesus, six pounds, eight ounces. Right? We don't celebrate that Jesus. What we celebrate about Jesus is that He was born to die. The second he took his first breath, you know what he, he did? He started to take on everything you've ever done. Think of it this way. Every time you spiritually fall down, your knees don't get bloody. His do. Every time you take a big tumble, your arm doesn't break. His does. Every time you commit a sin, you don't die for it. He already did. This holiday is about Jesus, and yet we make it about stuff. <coughs> Here's five quick verses. It may seem like a knock, but it's not. Here is exactly, if this could just be the Christmas verse, you, could, you should write this down. This is what it would be. Philippians 2, 3 through 8. Philippians is right there, top left corner. Philippians 2, 3 through 8. We're going to read it really quick, and hopefully the Holy Spirit will convict a lot of us. Starts off just like this. Kick right to the teeth. Don't be, what? Selfish. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Here's what I would say. You know what I used to love? Let me tell you my favorite Christmas story. I'm 11, and this was in rollerblades. How many of you have rollerblades in your life? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I didn't have rollerblades. So you know what? In my in the front of my street, I hung out with a couple guys, Anthony and Greg and a couple people, and they were really, really into hockey. So we would play Ooh. hockey in the street. They had rollerblades. You know what I had? Shoes. <laughs> I had to run. I could play. I played inline hockey in my tennis shoes, and it sucked. It was awful. They were all like, and I just, hang on. Right? I never got past the ball. Nothing was ever good for me except for Christmas, 11 years old. You know what I got? Skates. It was exciting. And so you know what I did? My skates were new and their skates rolled. So I would like wear my skates for no reason. We wouldn't even be playing hockey. I'd go next door to Anthony's house and put on my rollerblades to go next door. It took me longer to put them on than it would have walked over there, but I would rollerblade over there. Hey, dude, what's up? You want to hang out? You don't play hockey? That's cool. I'll just, you know. And I would just wear my skates. I was trying to show off because I thought it was so awesome. I went without for so long that when I finally got something, you know what I did? I made it too important. You know what I'm talking about? Here's another good example. I'm more rock and roll. Some of you don't date often, and that's good. I recommend that. But when you finally do date someone, you know what you do? You make sure everybody knows that you're dating somebody. Hey, did you? Did you? Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not a big deal. Why am I talking about it all the time? I don't know. I don't know. Right? 
right? When you finally get something that you haven't had, it doesn't have to become your whole world. And that's what we make Christmas into. When you've been wanting things and something for so long, you know what we become? Selfish. And then we try to use what God has blessed us with to impress other people. And that's enough, not the point at all. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others is better than yourselves. This is the right time of year to do that. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Here's what I want you to think of. We're celebrating the fact that Jesus was born and then he died. This is how he was in between. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges, meaning what? He was in heaven. He comes down and says, yeah, those people are dirty and ugly and sinful. Let me go save them. So he comes down here to earth. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of being a slave and was born as a human being. Christmas. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God. And everybody read that last verse. He was born. We celebrate his birth on Christmas. And ultimately, what happened? He died a criminal's death on the cross. Did he deserve it? No. Do you? Absolutely. Thank God you don't get what you deserve. Because if you did, Christmas would be the day that we're all doomed to hell. Let's celebrate Christmas because we're all going to hell. No, let's celebrate Christmas because we don't have to because he was born. That should be what we think of, but we don't. We think of things. It should be all about Jesus. Jesus was all about other people. So I'll ask you a simple question. Are you about other people or are you about yourself? Are you about the six people that you care about in life? Well, these people I really care about. I don't really care about anyone else. That's not okay. I get where you're coming from, but you should be mature enough to see beyond that. Because that's what a lot of time. well, I'm not selfish. I care about so-and-so and so-and-so and, and, and so-and-so. And so. No. If your life, if you can count on two hands how many people you genuinely care about, you don't care about people. You care about your bubble because it makes you happy. That's not what this time of year is all about. Jesus was all about other people. Are you about other people? Let's think about what Jesus did. Think of the fact that he was born. Never, ever, ever, ever sinned. You've sinned so many times today, probably. He never had a bad day where he sinned. He was perfect. He was born perfect, lived perfect, died perfect, but covered with your sin. And yet we say, God, I'm going to celebrate your birthday. Jesus, happy birthday. Can I have some stuff while I ignore other people's needs? While I ignore the fact that I'm a selfish person? But it's Christmas, I'm supposed to get whatever I want. I've been good all year just so I can't get something. Cool. Enjoy your junk. Enjoy your stuff that you won't even care about in here. Enjoy it. Don't miss out on Jesus and miss out on people. They need you more than you need your stuff. Here's a last little little point you've got up there. Selfish is what? Easy. Selfish is easy. We know how to be selfish because we are. You know how to be selfish. That's easy. Selfless is hard. And the kicker to everything is because God always has a kicker has to be for real. Because sometimes, and we'll talk about this in two seconds, sometimes here's what we do. I want to look like a good person. It's Christmas time, so I'll start being nice to people. I'll, I'll give someone something that I don't want anymore, or I'll donate a little bit of my time or money. And we try to do things to make ourselves feel better. Sometimes we do stuff for other people, and it's selfish, and it means nothing. Sure, it helps them, but we have the wrong motives. This is the time of year that brings out the best in people and the worst in people. That's good. You should Remember that. This time of year, look around. It'll bring out the best in people or the worst in people. What does it bring out in you? Does Christmas time really bring out your, your giving spirit? Wow, God, you really, I do have a lot. Maybe I don't need to ask for everything. Maybe there's other people that need stuff. Maybe I can help someone else. Or does Christmas bring about your selfish attitude? What can I get? What can I do? Oh, here's a list. How many of you have a Christmas list? Don't lie. Don't lie. I do too. I do. She knows that she's probably got five things that I've asked for. And vice versa. Dustin has two lists. No, I got two lists. <laughs> right? We have things that we want. Is that is that wrong? No. If, but if the things that we want we put above other people, and especially above God, is that wrong? Yes. But don't we do that all the time? Listen to me. Pay attention for three more minutes and we're done. I promise. Give me three more minutes. Selfish is easy. Selfless is hard. I'm not saying that Christmas is wrong. Nobody's saying that. And it's not a bad thing. But if that's all you're thinking about, it's gifts, things, junk, that's wrong. 
Write down this last one. This is the most amazing verse for Christmas. I truly believe this. 2 Corinthians, you've got it up on the corner. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Here's what Jesus says. Look, I'm not going to tell you exactly what to do. I'm just going to tell you how to do it. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. Now, this give doesn't necessarily mean money. It doesn't mean a gift. It can mean your time. It can mean a kind word. It can mean effort. It can mean whatever. But you have to decide in your heart how much to give. And the kicker, don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. Hey, 215 people here tonight, just because Thomas tried to make you feel guilty, it's not what it's about. Well, I feel guilty, and, you know, well, I guess you've given me a lot, so here. That's not what it's about. Here's the kicker. It has to be for real. You're either selfish or you act selflessly, and God says, just be real. Be who you are. If you're a selfish person, that's terrible, but be you. Try not to be. Let me change you, but don't fake it. God hates a faker. Give out of your heart because you want to. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. You know what? We don't take up offering at 215. You know why? Because when I do, I get $0. Or I get $1 from the kid that just says, ah, oh, don't get on with this. Here's a dollar. You guys don't like to give. I've learned this. You like to get. It's not a bad thing. We're here to bless you, so I'm happy to do it sometimes. But I've never met one of you who just continually comes up and says, what can I do? We're selfish people, all of us. I'm not knocking on you. I'm just saying that's the attitude that I've seen. And if I see it, God sees it. So I'll ask you, this holiday time, this Christmas time, we know what it's all about, but what do you make it about? What do you make this time about? And does it mean anything to you at all? Can we be honest? Is that fair? Can we just be honest? It's not about things, even though we make it about things. It's not about us. It's about other people. Most importantly, it's about Jesus. Do me a favor. Stand up. You can put everything down. Just stand up. We're going to pray, and we're going to call it a night. Tonight is not one of these big, big emotional, big, you know, I don't have some heavy message to throw on you. I have a simple truth, a simple seed that if you'll let God put in your heart and water it, it'll change your life. It'll change the way you treat people. It'll change the way you look at stuff. And most importantly, it'll change your relationship with God if you'll let it. You believe that? God's word is true and it'll change you if you'll let it. Bow your heads. Everybody, if you will, bow your heads for me. Close your eyes if you will. God, I thank you so much. God, for the fact that you loved me like we sang about, God, like we worship you for. Your love is beyond what we deserve. So much to the point that, God, when I'm sinning, God, when I'm in the middle of my mess, when I'm falling in the mud and just rolling around in it because either nobody knows or I just don't care anymore, God, when I'm at my worst, Jesus, you died for that moment. And the next moment, and the next moment, every time I screw up, God, Jesus, that is why you did it. And God, this time of year is supposed to be just about celebrating the fact that you came for us, God. I was trapped. I was, I was taken away by my sin, God. I was locked behind a door. And you, God, who are the ultimate superhero, sent Jesus to come and rescue me and save me. And that's what Christmas is about. But God, forgive me. Forgive us because of what we've turned it into. For our hearts, God, that are about us and things and stuff, and while all that is okay, God, if we put it over you, it's not okay. So give us all a little gut check moment tonight, God, and remind us what the next 20 days are all about, God. That's all we've got left. When we leave here, we've got 19 days. God, I pray that each and every one of us would make the most of 19 days and put you first in our minds so that we can bless others, so that we can help others, so that we can be a little less selfish. Make this the most incredible, amazing holiday season we've ever had, but not because of what we get, but because of what we give. God, I love you and I thank you. I pray for your blessings over each and every single one of us. God, give us a safe week. God, let us just go love. God, help us to love you back the best that we can and to love everybody else the way that you love us. Anybody can say Amen. I love you all. Hey, do me a favor. Do this with your hands and clap for Blake and Nick. Yeah.